Hi everybody. Uh, this video today is about how Satan is trying to destroy the church. Uh, he doesn't come in like a great big floods. He just kind of gets, he does this. He hammers away. <laughs> he kind of hammers away at our faith. He hammers away at the sound doctrines that as Christians we should hold to. Uh, I've done some teaching on this before, maybe in a video, but, uh, God really gave me this illustration. I know He wants me to, uh, do it today. So, I'm gonna, what we're going to do in this video is kind of build a church and kind of show how the devil is working against the church in many different ways to destroy us. Um, one thing he works on is our sound doctrine, the sound doctrines that we hold to as Christians. And so Jesus is the only foundation, 1 Corinthians uh, 3.11. No, there's no foundation that can be laid than that which has been laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation of our faith. He's the foundation that church is built upon. And uh, it's not, the foundation is not a man, it's not a religion, it's nothing like that. Jesus Christ himself is the foundation. We believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, we believe in Jesus Christ, he died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. We believe all these foundational teachings about Jesus. But here's what the devil does. He comes along and he hammers away at the foundation of our belief. Uh, he tries to get us to believe something else about Jesus. And we're living in the last days, I believe, and I've heard stories about how Jesus was married to Mag or Mary Magdalene. And, I've, and, and you know, people come out with books all the time. And I believe that the devil puts those thoughts and books in their minds because he's working on our uh, foundation. Another method that uh, the devil uses is political correctness. Jesus Christ said in uh, John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Now, political correctness says, oh, no, we're all children of God all over the world, and all religions lead to God. That's a lie. Jesus Christ is the only way. He said it himself. There's no other way to God Almighty but through Jesus Christ. Because it's Jesus that died on the cross. It's Jesus that bore the sins of humanity. It's Jesus that rose again on the third day. Uh, he is God's only begotten Son. And that's just a few basic things about that. Uh, in fact, I wrote down some very basics that as Christians we should know. And I'll tell you this, I have met people in the last 35 years, I have met people that used to be a part of a mainline denominational church or a church somewhere. And, uh, well, I'll tell you this story. I was invited to a Jehovah Witness meeting one day by a, a distant relative. So I went, <laughs> and uh, I, to, I was kind of curious, but I, I wanted to see what they was talking about. So I went over there, and first person I met when I walked in this these people's house, this lady came up to me, she told me what church in St. Mary's Church she used to go to, but th then she started telling me how wonderful the people were, that where she was going, and, and uh, all the truth that they was giving her. And as I listened to the lady do the Bible study, she was so far off base, uh, she didn't really know what she was talking about. I mean, she wasn't holding to the scriptures at all. And so this lady had been pulled away from the foundation of Jesus Christ and who he is. Because Jehovah's Witness teach a different, uh, they, they say that Jesus was Michael the Archangel. As Christians, we know that Jesus Christ is the second person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Uh, which I might get into a little bit if time allows me to. Uh, so she got led away. And then with that thought, before I start talking about some of the foundational truths of Jesus... I'd like to read a couple of scriptures out of uh, Timothy. In uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 says, Now the Spirit speaks expressively that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Using that lady, for example, she had been uh, brought or taken away from the foundation by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And uh, the devil's working overtime to destroy a Christian's life. And one of the things he right away attacks is the foundation. Another scripture in uh, 1 Timothy is found in uh, chapter 4, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, I believe we're living in those days, and most of you believe it too. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, Sound like today? <laughs> Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontentious, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, 
heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Now here's the verse I wanted to get to. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. I looked up in some other uh, uh, versions of the Bible, and it says having a form of religion. So basically what he's saying, these people are outwardly re religious, but they have all these qualities about them. They're covetous, they're blasphemers, they're disobedient, they uh, fierce, despise them that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded. So that's the time I believe that we're living in. People hold to a form of religion because it soothes your conscience to maybe go to uh, the mosque or to go to the synagogue or go to the church once a week or the building. And then another verse is uh, chapter 4, starting in verse 1 of Second Timothy. I charge ye therefore, this is Paul talking to Timothy, I charge ye therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now throughout First Timothy, Second Timothy, and Titus, doctrine and sound doctrine is mentioned eight times. So apparently that's really important to have good doctrine. Well, that foundation is a part of good doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth that shall be turned unto fables. Sounds like today's society. People have itchy ears. They don't want to hear about holiness. They don't want to hear about sin. They don't want to hear about living right for God. They don't want to hear about living for an eternal purpose. It's all about me, myself, and I right now. And in America, what is God going to give me? So therefore, they, they look for those preachers and teachers who will teach them, and they, that's all they get. Their diet is nothing but prosperity. What's God going to give me now? What can I have? Well, I do believe God does bless his people, but it's so out of balance in America and I believe that a lot of it has come from Satan to destroy the church that is in America, which is another teaching in itself. So out of these scriptures, you can see that people are led astray by uh, doctrines of devils. Uh, the time comes when people hold to a form of religion or godliness. And Paul said, preach the word that they might be sound in doctrine. Well, what word? What word are we preaching, preachers? The Bible. When God called me to preach, He said to me, in the night that He called me, He said, preach my, He said, I've called you to preach my gospel and preach my word. Well, I knew what the gospel was, and I didn't know anything about the Bible, except I didn't know about the gospel of salvation. I knew that Jesus was the answer and the truth. I didn't know much about it, but I knew that you had to get saved and go to heaven. <laughs> and, uh, that's about all I knew. He said, preach my word. And He stressed this to me a couple times, and then I said, what word, Lord? I said, that church teaches this, and that church teaches that, and, and this people over here teach this. I said, I don't know what word. Everybody's teaching something. He said, preach my word. I said, what word? He said, the Bible. I said, oh, that word. The Bible. Preach the Bible. The Bible is the inspired word of God. Second Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished into all good works. So the Bible is the word, the inspired word of God. Now you either believe that or you don't. As Christians, we search the Bible, it says all scripture is given by inspiration, it says it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction. So it's here that we find the answers that we need. Do you believe that? That the Bible is the found is a foundational stone that's on the foundation is a building block that we must believe in. This is God's written word to us today. I don't want to get too much into this building yet. Uh, going back to the foundation for a minute. So the devil's working overtime to destroy the church, and he's hammering away at it. I lost my chisel. He's hammering away at it, trying to put cracks in it. Just like the lady that I seen that day, she said uh, she had left this one church for this, what most Christians consider to be a cult. So some of the foundational teachings of Jesus Christ, and I wrote down a few because there's a lot of them, but I wrote down nine that I thought was important. Well, I've already mentioned he's the only foundation you can build on, his divinity. 
And I just wrote, uh, I printed out these scriptures, just one for each one. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. First three verses, His divinity. He was, Jesus said, I came down from heaven to do the will of the Father. He was always with the Father in eternity as God the Son. And it says all things were made by him, and he was always there, and the word was God. His eternal existence. I just read, I just read that, and that's out of John 6, 38, where I said it. For I came down from heaven, not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. The virgin birth. The devil is working at that. Was Jesus really born of a virgin or not? Well, you know, that's old-fashioned stuff. I mean, who could be born of a virgin? Well, all things is possible with God. And it was just a fulfillment of Scripture out of uh, Isaiah 7, 14. So, just to give you this one verse out of Matthew 1, 22, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bear forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Another uh, foundational part of the foundation of Jesus is that First Peter 2.22, Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. We are living in a time when all kinds of books are being written about Jesus. Uh, History Channel has uh, uh, these uh, stories about Jesus on TV. Different people giving their interpretation about Jesus. Some people say he was married. Some people say he was a homosexual. And the list goes on and on and on. But there are several verses, and, and this one I just read, Jesus was born without sin, and in his entire life he kept every point of the law and never broke one point of the law. He was totally righteous, totally holy, and did no sin whatsoever. Neither, it says in 1 John, it says, neither was guile found in his mouth even. In other words, he didn't even speak evil. Jesus was totally perfect without sin. That is a part of our foundation. And so if a person begins to believe different things about Jesus, it's kind of like, uh, you know, if, if you don't believe in virgin birth, you don't believe he was uh, his deity, that he's, the, well, another one, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> this stirs me up, because I know the enemy is working hard against Christian's faith. And, uh, you know, it's not like he's a roaring lion right there in our face, hammering away at our faith. He comes in kind of sneaky. And we don't realize he's doing it. We'll, we'll hear this thing about Jesus. Maybe on TV. Maybe online. And pretty soon, he's got a crack in there. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. This foundation stone. If that was part of a house, and I could put a big chip in it, and make, make a big hole in it, and I filled it up with, say, some toilet paper, I push that all in there. If I did that enough, that foundation would be weak in the house, and pretty soon that house would probably fall over. So the devil's just working a little here and a little there on our foundation. Uh, I'll take that. You see that picture there. Another point about Jesus. He's the only way of salvation. I've already said this, uh, John 14, 6. Jesus talking, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Now, I know a lot of you know this, but this is not for you. This is for those who don't know these things and don't realize that the devil is working against their faith. So what you can do, if you already know these things, pray for those that don't know it or who have been lured away by seducing spirits. His resurrection. But did Jesus die for our sins, buried, and rose again on the third day? You better believe it. First John, or First Corinthians, starting at uh, 15th chapter and verse 3. Paul's talking to the church, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he had been seen of Cephas and then of the twelve. After that he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to this present, but some have died or fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James and then of all the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. So Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. I've never seen Jesus, but I do know this, that when I called out to Jesus and accepted Him as my Savior, there was something that took place in here that changed my life completely around. Totally around. He's still alive today, folks. 
Where is he at? Well, he's in heaven at the right hand of the Father as our advocate. That says in 1 Timothy 2.5, There is one God and one mediator between God and man, men, the man Christ Jesus. So he's our high priest. He has entered into the right hand of the Father to intercede for you and I. Because sometimes as Christians, we mess up, don't we? <laughs> Thank God we have an advocate. So let me build this illustration out. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what the, the illustration the Lord gave me for today. So then we begin to build upon the foundation other doctrines. Remember we talked about a little bit about sound doctrine. Paul said to Timothy, preach the word sound doctrine. So what are some other sound doctrines that we hold to as Christians? Well, we believe in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We believe in Almighty God. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. He says in Isaiah 42, 43, and, and chapter 44, he mentions it several times, and God is speaking. He says, there is no other God but me. If there was another God, I don't know about it. So there's only one God out of the whole universe. There's only one God. Let's talk about God, our Heavenly Father. Uh, there's not many gods. There's, I know there's a lot of religions on planet Earth, and they all say they have the God. But in Christianity, those gods that they're holding to are false gods. Allah, uh, Buddha, uh, Hinduism, all these different, Hinduism has a lot of gods. All these different gods, and then you got Wiccan, and then you got people who, there's, I heard about a group of people, they believe that monkeys are God. So there's a lot of people believing a lot of things as God. So what God do we believe in? We believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, there's only one God. Out of all the universe and the physical and the, the invisible, there's only one God. And he has revealed himself through his son and he walked among us. And he has revealed himself and gave it, given us his written word. And it's that God by his Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit God, who lives inside of us, who directs us and guides us. And there's another doctrine, the Holy Spirit. Uh, these are foundational uh, stones that we've got to believe in. Hallelujah. What are the doctrines we got? Well, we've got that man is lost and in sin, and he needs a Savior. Let's put that one up there, because it's been chipped on a little bit. What other doctrines we hold to? That Jesus Christ came, that's part of this, he came to seek and save that which was lost, uh, which is mankind. There's a heaven and there's a hell. Let's put that in there. And I think you can see what I'm doing. I'm building this up, and finally we get to the point we put the last stone on it. Now, I want you to imagine this is a really big structure because I don't have enough bricks. And the last one? So, the church. <laughs> uh, individually and worldwide, the church. The devil is working against the church. And it's... Oh, there went my chisel. It's up to you and I not only to believe, know what we believe, well, we've got to help others also to be rooted and grounded in good teaching and good foundational truths so that people aren't led away. So, get my chisel out of here. The devil works, works on us. Bound, 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 bound. It's down on the Word of God. You know that's just a bunch of lies. You still hold to that? That's so out of date, the Bible. And so pretty soon he puts enough cracks in there and he breaks that brick of that foundational stone of our belief that, well, I don't know. You know. And then every day you got people coming out of seminary who are highly educated. They don't know God. They hold to a form of godliness. It's, and their, their choice to go into ministry is just a, uh, it's like a career choice. They haven't been called, so they stand behind pulpits. They preach garbage. And they're not preaching the Word. They're preaching all kinds of garbage. And so you've got the church, a lot of mainline denominations, denominational churches have fallen away. It's an apostasy. It talks about in the latter days it being an apostasy. A falling away from the truth. A falling away from the faith. Well, you can't fall away from something unless you've been there. So a lot of churches have fallen away. Well, you know, uh, foundation. The devil has creeped into those churches through, fall, through lies and deception and through uh, seducing spirits. And so people are preaching a different gospel. They're not preaching the gospel that you read about in the Bible. They're preaching a phony gospel, a perverted gospel. And a lot of it's based on political correctness. Well, now you can't be that way, brother. You know, everybody's a child of God. No, that's not true. If you ain't saved, you're a child of Satan. That's the Bible. 
Now you can believe this or you can believe that. Believe what you want to. But if you're going to truly believe the Scriptures, it will put you at odds at times with people. So getting back to this, the devil chipping away. He's chipping away our faith. Is Jesus the only way? Well, political correctness says no, but the Bible says yes. Uh, how about some other things that we could add to this, like the traditional marriage between a man and a woman? Has the devil been chipped away of that, especially in America? Has he broken that foundational stone? Well, not according to my Bible. The marriage is between a man and a woman. That's biblical. Jesus said in the beginning, God made them male and female. Period. That answers my question about that subject. The Bible will give you the answers that you're looking for. But the thing is, will you accept it? Will I accept it? Sometimes we do accept it, but because of pressure from outside, family members maybe, we change our opinion a little bit because we don't want to offend anyone. You know, it's time for Christians to grow up and put on some big boy pants, if I said that way. Uh, Jesus uh, was loving and kind, but he rebuked the religious leaders constantly. He called them snakes and vipers. What kind of Christian will you be? Will you be a Christian that stands for the Word of God and the truths of Jesus Christ? Or will you be a wishy-washy Christian? It's all up to you. Let's be a bold line for Jesus. Amen. A uh, heaven and hell. Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? Yep. To be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Hell wasn't prepared for man. It was prepared for Satan and the, his followers of angels that fell in rebellion. But if you read in Revelation at the white throne judgment, all these people that never knew God, never never returned to God, says they're thrown into the lake of fire. There is a hell. There is a heaven. Then you have... A couple ordinances that, as Christians, we hold to, and that be water baptism and communion. Does water baptism save you? No. It's something we do after we get saved. If you read in Acts, uh, Philip, Philip went down to Samaria and preached a great revival, and it says the Spirit of God took him away to a desert road, and there he met a eunuch. And the eunuch was reading out of Isaiah, I believe it was 53. And so the Spirit of the Lord said to Philip, Go up to the chariot. And he did, and he says, do you know what you're uh, reading? He says, no, not unless some man helps me. So Philip, from that point, preached, at him, preached unto him Jesus. And going on down the road, pretty soon the eunuch said, well, here's some water. What hinders me to be baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may, believe, you may be baptized. So salvation is before baptism. We do baptism... This is a traditional Christian viewpoint, at least the churches I'm familiar with, is that you get saved, you're born again, and then we were baptized as an outward uh, show or expression of what's taking place in the heart. And the way I was taught it when I was first saved was that it's kind of like this. You, you know, you, you come to Jesus, you get saved. You, when you go down in the water, it's the old man, the old sin nature, the old person you was, and when you come up, it's, it's representative of the new person, the born-again man that's taking place in the heart. We do it also because Jesus told us to do it. And then we have communion. Uh, the bread and the cup. So those are two ordinances he put into the church. He said about communion, he says, uh, do this in remembrance of me. That's why we keep communion. To always be mindful of what Jesus did for us. Thank you, Lord. And now that's just some basic uh, things uh, then there's that social, social issues that I talked about. Another social issue is abortion. Is abortion wrong or is it right? What do you think as a Christian? What does the Word of God say? He said about Jeremiah, he says, Before you was in the womb, I knew you. Which, all right, think about this. When Jesus was in the womb of Mary, was he Jesus? Sure he was. He was, here's the thing about a child in the womb. It's just in a different stage of development. Right now, I'm almost 70. Two more months, I'll be 70. I'm just in a stage of development. When I was 50, when I was 10, when I was 5, when I went to the first grade, right down to the mother's womb, it's also just stages of development. The baby in the womb is a child. It's that simple. 
But an ungodly society, it says in the last days they'd be lovers of self, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And a lot of abortions that take place is because somebody don't want to lose their figure. They don't want to, they want to be able to wear a bikini that year. I mean, it's all kinds of selfish, selfish motivated things. Now I want you to think about this. I, I don't usually talk about abortion because I know it's a, it's a touchy subject. But according to the Bible, that's my view on it. It's that simple. What will you believe? Will you, out of political correctness, believe it's right or wrong? It says one place in Proverbs that God hates those who shed innocent blood. How much more innocent can you get as a little baby being born right down through the mother's uh, birth canal and then having a scissors plunge in the back of your head and even then sometimes they survive and let them lay there and die? What kind of society have we become? We have been flushed and we're going down the toilet, folks. United States of America, pretty soon we're going to start saying it this way, the late, great USA. Now, we might be powerful in, in our technology, but in moral fiber, where's it at? Well, I could really go on and on about that, maybe I will sometimes. <laughs> so, you know, it's, these social issues, are we going to be persuaded by political correctness, or by what the government says, or by what the president says, or by what the uh, the the Preacher down the street says, or whatever it might be. Are we going to hope to the Word of God for our values? Well, that's what God's looking for. He's looking for some warriors in the army of the Lord. So what kind of warrior will you be in the end times? Thank you, Jesus. So this illustration today, uh, I really knew that God gave me this. I know I've talked about it before. But we're under attack. And we need to get our head out of the sand and look and behold these things. The enemy is working overtime to destroy us, destroy the church. And it's getting worse in America. Uh, right now, if you talk about certain social issues, people begin to cry out. That's hate speech. No, it's not hate speech. Now, we can do it in a spirit of hate. We ain't got no business going out and judging the world anyways. That's God's business. But we have to stand for certain values and say, no, this is what I believe about marriage. This is what I believe about abortion. This is what I believe about how to treat my wife. This is what I believe about uh, going to church. This is what I believe about serving God. This is what I, you understand what I'm saying? Jesus said, man lives not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Thank you, Jesus. So I think I'm going to close with that. I hope you got something out of this. Just realize that even though you may know these things, these basics and stuff, a lot of Christians don't know it. They're saved, they're young in the Lord, they've never been rooted. And one more thing, I'm going to close with this, hopefully. <laughs> uh, I got saved back in 1965. Uh, Mom and Dad took me to a little country church out in the country on the other side of the uh, Salina. Uh, and I, I mean, I didn't know anything. I knew that the red letters in the Bible was the word of Jesus. That's all I knew. I didn't even know what that meant. But I, I, every time I went to church, I really felt the Spirit of God. We sang, we praised, we shouted, we hallelujah and everything else. But I wasn't rooted in the word of all at all. As Christians, we have to get, and this is for the preachers, I guess, for all of us, we have to make sure that the children of God, especially those young babes, they have to have the sincere milk of the word and get rooted in these solid, sound, foundational truths. Because if they're not, they're going to be drawn away by cults who come along and in a time of crisis in their life, pat them on the shoulder, well, you're, you know, we love you and we're there for you and whatever, and just pull them right out away from God and teach them stuff that's not biblical. So we have to make sure that God's people are rooted and grounded. And that has to be a priority, especially for the young babes in Christ. Amen. So I'm going to close with that. Uh, thanks for watching and God bless. Thank you, Lord Jesus.